we have the basics of a level, but sometimes you need to animate things within your level, or you want to make a cutscene, or you want to do something a little bit more involved than just moving a block back and forward, which we can do through simple programming, right? That is where our sequencer animations come in. So let's go back into our content folder here. And if we go into our cinematics, we can make a level sequence. And we're going to make a little intro cutscene, kind of like Mario Galaxy or Mario Sunshine, that kind of thing, right? Kind of in that style where we show off the level before we actually get to play it. So let's call this intro animation. And we can drag that into our level. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but I like to put it at the places where they get triggered. So we're going to put this one at the start. And if we double click that asset, we open up a new window here, which is the sequencer window. Here we can drag in actors from our hierarchy and animate things about them. Pretty much anything you want to animate about them. So what we're going to do is we'll be adding a couple of camera actors. So let's add a camera actor here first and put that one somewhere around here maybe ish and if you want it specifically for camera actors some other actors it also works decently well with uh, but if you want to move it around a little bit better than like this way you can actually right click and what you can do is we can pilot the actor and now we can move it around as if it was just our view so let's put this one in here and it automatically makes a keyframe for the first position. So let's click on that and then move about about 60 frames. That should be about a second. Oh, it's set to 30 frames per second. You can set uh, the frame rate for the animation uh, here. So let's set that to 60. If your game runs at a different frame rate, this will just like match up with speed. So if you're running at 120 frames per second, this animation won't play twice as fast. It's just for you as a developer to have a reference of, okay, 60 frames per second. So if I set this next keyframe at frame 60, that will be one second. Matter of fact, let's actually make it a second and a half, 90 frames. And we can just move our camera like back a little bit and click this transform again. And now we can see that our camera does this movement, which is way too fast. So let's get that keyframe and put it at like 240. And that's a little bit more like what we expect it to be. But you can feel there's a little bit of easing in and easing out of the movement, which oftentimes is what we want. But in this case, it's actually not. So let's right click here and let's set the interpolation mode to being linear. That means that it will not have that easing. And now, is just a linear motion moving backward. And the most wonderful thing is, if we can add a track here, we can make a camera cut track, to which we can add a bunch of cameras, which means that when this animation plays, we can automatically cut from one camera to another to make a cutscene, something a little bit more cinematic, you know, showing a little bit of this camera movement and then showing a little bit of that camera movement and cutting back and forth and maybe with dialogue, cutting back and forth manually between two cameras, that kind of stuff. So we can add a camera and we can just an existing camera actor, which is this one. And now we can see that we're using this camera actor for here. So let's add a extra camera actor. And what we can actually do, because a camera actor is kind of supposed to be a gameplay camera. If we specifically are making a cutscene, we can use a cine camera actor, which has a couple of more options to make things look a little bit more cinematic. So for the second one, let's add a, a cinema camera and pilot that. And as you will be able to see, by default, this one is a lot more zoomed in, which is not what I want at the moment. So we can set the focal length, as it's called, to something a little bit lower so that it's a little bit more zoomed out and this is a little bit more of what i am looking for and this comes with a bunch of different lens settings as well which can make things look much more interesting and cinematic if that's what you're going for so let's go to the end of our previous animation and add our cinema camera actor into our sequencer as well and we want to animate its transform component and let's do another like 200 frames or so 
moving in this direction and rotating a little bit something like this putting in another keyframe here and now we can see that's rotating around more or less in the way i would like the movement itself though is still in a straight path which i can see if i stop piloting the movement itself is in this straight path that we see here which might not be what you actually want so let's increase the length of this cutscene to actually be long enough in total and now let's select our transform open up that menu here and get to our location and specifically we want to change things a little bit about the y location so let's select that track specifically and we can show the animation keys in the curve at the top instead so this shows the movement as a curve that we can actually edit a little bit so if we for now make this full screen and we select one of the keyframes we can set this broken tangents cubic interpolation which allows you to change the tangents which are these little handles over here independently from each other on a keyframe which is very nice and then we also want to toggle weighted tangents for cubic interpolation modes because that allows you to actually make the tangents longer than uh, usual and with that we're going to put that back down into our window here because now we want to be able to use that to make this thing move back as well without needing to add any more keyframes so we can zoom out a little bit to see what our curve looks like and now we can also see that the path in the viewport here is curving a little bit and playing with these two tangents both allows us to eventually get the kind of curve that we're looking for so going back into the sequencer itself we also get a little preview of the camera itself here which is very nice now we can see that it also moves in a curve which works really really well with its rotation and of course we're going to add a camera cut when this thing starts moving so we pull back our first camera here and then in our camera cuts we add a second camera which is going to be the cinema camera actor and we'll cut from that actor to this actor and let's add one more that just does a pullback of the entire level i think that's quite fun so we add another cinema camera actor here which we add to our sequencer and you can see when we do that we actually automatically start piloting it as well which is rather nice and again we want to zoom this out a little bit more matter of fact maybe we want to actually zoom this out even more because we want to be able to capture the entire level in one go and we put in a keyframe here on the transform and then we pull out even further adding another keyframe to the very end and again this red line you want to extend that to the end because that's actually how long this sequence player plays for and we're going to add that as a camera cut which in this case i think this is uh, actor eight yeah and now that will cut over to this camera as well and if we stop piloting that now we can go over to the actor for that sequence player in our viewport and we can turn on autoplay i don't think it's turned on by default but i tested this a little bit before uh, so you can turn on autoplay and set whether or not it should loop in this case we don't want it to loop of course uh, but if you do want it to loop we can say it needs to loop indefinitely so it's always going to keep looping or you can make it loop an exact number of times so we can say you loop one time or you loop five times or you can even loop like twenty-seven thousand times if you wanted to but after that number of loops is done it's going to stop looping again we don't want our thing to loop we can set the play rate so if we've made all of our animations and they're good as far as the proportions of the speeds goes but maybe it's entirely a little bit too slow or a little bit too fast you don't need to reanimate everything you can just set the play rate to be higher or lower the start offset is pretty self-explanatory i would imagine and then we can also say that it should start at a random time which is something that i honestly never use <laughs> and there's a bunch of different other things as well that we can do so if we start our level now we can see as soon as we start the level we have this little cutscene that plays that shows off the different obstacles in the level and then we cut to our actual player and we can start playing the level there's one little issue though as those cutscenes are playing we can actually already move around even though the camera doesn't see us which we want to disable so something we can do uh let's go back to the start of this animation real quick 
and we can add a new track here and we can add an event track which uh, will go for a trigger and add a new key at our current time if you right click that we can go into the properties and we can say the event at the moment is unbound and we can bind this to any actor and any event on any actor in our scene we can also create a new endpoint which will create a event in the animation itself so we can see here, intro animation director bp create a new sequence event so let's call this disable player movements and here we can simply uh get our player controller and disable the input for it and we want to put that into the player controller and then the target is going to be uh get player character which gets us a reference to whatever our player character so that way our input will be disabled at the start of this animation let's dock that up here because we're going to come back to this in a moment and we can check that by just playing the animation itself and waiting because nothing is restoring our player input so once this animation ends which is very nice we still don't have our input we we can't move meaning that we couldn't move all throughout that animation because of that event well of course <laughs> Once that ends, we want to be able to move. So what we do is we go to the very end of our animation here and we simply add a second trigger here. So we add a second keyframe. We go to properties, event, unbound, create new endpoint. And that adds a second event into this intro animation and we'll call this enable player movements. And for this, we'll copy over these get player character and get player controller because with this we're going to enable inputs and of course again it's going into the wrong pin here we want to play a controller in the player controller and a player character into the target connect it up to our enable player movement and now we'll see if we play this we get the cutscene at the beginning of the level and when the cutscene ends our player can move around and play that level so now we have a Mario Galaxy style intro cutscene for our level and that immediately as you can see adds a lot of production value and a more professional feeling even though we're still working with very blocky and temporary assets it does add a feeling of more quality polish and professionalism. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.